Here it is. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Needham Cultural Council September 21st, 2020 meeting. Woo! Yay. I'm your host, Carly Nanda. I'm going to turn into a game show. There you go. <laughs> Actually, wasn't the August one the first fiscal year meeting? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yes, you're right. It is. I feel like I'm <laughs> cycled. Sorry to rain on your parade. Year. What did I? Oh, yeah. Okay. Don't rain on my parade. <laughs> no. Hello, this is uh, Charlie Nanda, and I'm going to be reading this script, which is really exciting. This open meeting of the Needham Cultural Council is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of the emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remote so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Uh, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participa participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Uh, for this meeting, the Needham Culture Council is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website and identifying how the public may join. Um, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. I think today it seems like everyone is attending by video conference. I don't see any other participants. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording, and this recording is later posted on the town site through YouTube. Uh, all supporting materials have been provided Mem by been provided to the members of this body. They're available on the town's website unless otherwise noted, which is including our agenda. Uh, we are now turning to the first item on the agenda, but before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes for the illustrious Julia Gould, our secretary. Uh, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude the remarks, the I will then invite members to raise their hands virtually or via video to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name's called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Um, other people can hear you and speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Um, the most important thing is when you're speaking, introduce yourself before you speak so we know who is speaking. Um, Finally, with each vote taken in the meeting, it will be conducted by roll call with our secretary, Julia Gould. Um, so without further ado, welcome. Hey everyone, I wanted to go around because we have um, a couple guests tonight. We have Joni Shackett and she is a potential new member. And we have, it looks like Heather Simmons has joined us as well. Hello, Heather. Nice to meet you. I'm Charlie Nanda. I'm the chair of the Needham Culture Council. This is my second meeting as chair. And as Gail has pointed out, this is our second meeting of the fiscal year. It's when our cycle really starts is in September. Sometimes we don't meet over the summer. So September is usually our first get back together. But we did a lot of work this summer. Krista Mazzacci is not going to be here tonight. She is the former chair and she is ex officio. Um, and she was the most graceful, graceful chair I think we've had in my experience and greatly un, it did not clue me into how much work being chair actually is in the last month. She was really secretive about all that amazing stuff she was doing behind the scenes. Um, I've spoken to Gail like a bunch in the last few weeks. I'm harassing her by text because um, she sure does a lot beside, behind the scenes as treasure and so does Julia as secretary. Um, we'll go over the minutes. Um, those been, have been passed out too. But um, let's see. Let's do a roll call. I'll, um, Julie, you want to take that away and everyone can just say hi. Um, actually, when you say hi, will you say one thing about yourself and um, how you're dealing with the cool air adjustment? 
that'll be our way to introduce each other. Take it away, Julia. All right, well, you're first, Charlie Nanda. Ah. I'm here, hi, I'm Charlie Nanda, I'm the chair, and uh, I made some kale soup tonight because it is soup weather. Uh, Gail Lustig. I'm Gail Lustig, I'm the treasurer, and I am dealing with the cool weather by trying to track down some firewood for my brand new super duper fire pit so that I can have a fire. <laughs> Um, and excited about that. And my allergies hate this weather. So I want it to turn a little bit. Get the leaves out of the way, then we'll be good. Julia Gould, that's me. Um, what am I doing? I love fall and winter. So I am like getting ready with all of my sweaters, all of my cardigans, all of my boots, my booties, everything. It's, I'm very excited for the turn of season. Uh, Sharon Breitbart. Uh, I am here and I broke down and put the heat on last night. <laughs> Cheating. <sighs> Elizabeth Cook. I am here this evening, Elizabeth Cook, and um, I like this weather. I went for a beautiful walk today in Concord by the river. It was just mm. gorgeous. Happy Friedberg. Hi, uh, Kathy Friedberg. Um, I, on the other hand, am trying to chase my husband to stop turning the heat up because I feel like we could just put a sweater on at this point. So, so that's how I'm dealing with it. Uh, Monique Harrington is not present. Yael Halpern is not present. She's going to be late. She's going to be late. Yeah. Uh, Betsy Mullane. Okay, guys, it's sweater weather. I'm Betsy <laughs> Mullane, and I love sweater weather. So I'm in my glory in this sort of weather. It's my favorite season of the year. Anne McCaffrey is not present. Kristen is not present. Um, and that's everybody except for uh, Joni and Heather. Hey, okay. Um, so I think the best thing to do is keep your microphone phone on mute unless you're speaking. So let's, um, Joni, do you wanna uh, introduce yourself? Um, we, we met through Gail and you and I talked on the phone a little bit, but maybe just introduce yourself, give us a quick thing about yourself and why you're interested in the council. Um, my name is Joni Shockett. I've lived in Needham for 42 years. Um, I grew up in Newton. I have three grown children and two and almost three grandchildren. Um, the third one, a little surprise, will arrive in late November. And I love the arts. I grew up with a dad who was an artist and um, one of his pictures is right behind me and a musician. And I was a, I played several instruments and sang somewhat professionally and, um, paint and do a lot of crafting stuff. And I was always too busy to do much of anything with two or three jobs and three children in, of all age groups. And uh, I retired in December with the idea that I would be able to start getting involved in a lot of things. And we got hit with a, um, a virus, I believe it's called. Anyway, so now, I don't remember how this came up, but I saw the thing about the boxes, the electrical boxes around Needham, and I got really excited. Um, a friend of mine did something in Florida. She started the piano project, she's an artist, and they did in Southern Florida, they took old pianos that would have been thrown away and they painted them and put them all around um, Boca and Delray Beach. And it was just beautiful. And it was so exciting to see. So I'm very interested in the arts. I have a kid who's a professional musician and anything I can do, I think that they have been terribly underserved during this pandemic. They're always underserved, but during this pandemic, all the artists who are really having a hard time have been ignored by society at large. It's like, so far below the bottom of the totem pole, it's been really upsetting. 
Joni, we're so glad you're here. And just so you know, we had a piano project on the dockets before COVID. So really, yeah. So we'll we'll talk more later about your okay. interest, you and I, and um, maybe where you think you could fit in. So just keep your ear out during the meeting if there's anything that tickles your fancy, and we'll chat about that. I definitely and, will. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Hi, Heather. Heather, it has become kind of highly recommended through a few of my friends, and we spoke on the phone, and she is an artist um, in residence over at, uh, she's a member of the pottery studio over at Gorse Mills, which we all love mm. our studio here in Needham. And uh, what, do you want to say hi, Heather? Hello, everybody. And I am a working artist and a mother of a 13-year-old. Um, and let's see, I study studied the arts, I studied painting and metalsmithing and uh, jewelry making, and I've had businesses. And uh, when I moved to Needham, it was a big transition, moved about almost five years ago and found the potter's shops and studio and started working there and um, kind of went into that and have always wanted to feel more connected to the town um i've also done some teaching and would like to see do, do you want me to give you a little spiel or how much time do i have <laughs> or just <laughs> uh, whatever i don't think for you either so <laughs> no not at all it's um we uh the way that it really i mean works to become a, a member is you just have to care about the arts and then you go through the process of the town and um really the town sometimes sends us people like Betsy that we had no idea were coming and we were just excited and surprised to have her. So it, um, we're, we're happy to have anyone who is ready to volunteer and work and uh, be committed. Yeah, well, I, I would love to be more involved in the Needham community and in the arts. So it feels like a good fit. And I do have time and I like to have a focus more of a focus outside of just my art making as well. So that's where the teaching is nice. I was supposed to teach over the summer, but for obvious reasons that fell through, the camps were closed. So, um, But I'd like to see, I know there's sometimes, I don't always read the listings for what's offered through the town for art making, but I'd also like to see more of it actually visible to the town. I don't feel like there's a lot within the town. Um, it doesn't, um, I know people are very hesitant to put things up. Like I know in the town when, well, I won't go there because I might get political, but um, well, like for instance, the chalking, that beca and, and that could just be artwork, but it, and people were making statements and then they, so people are a little bit cautionary with moving, perhaps, maybe I'm, you guys would definitely know more than I would with how it works in the town, but. Um, well, as we go through the agenda, pay attention at, uh, to the areas that interest you, and then we'll talk okay. after the meeting at some point at, about where you think you fit in. And um, we definitely have, have a lot to talk about in the agenda, and I think it will point to what you're mentioning because I do want to talk about that chalking later. So feel free to part participate or listen, whatever makes you feel both feel comfortable. Um, Can I say one more thing here? Yeah. Can I say one more quick thing. Yeah. And then um, let you get to the agenda, which is just uh, one thing. And I think I mentioned it to you on the phone when we talked is just the fact that the Gorse Mill Studios, that's a, there's a lot of artists in one little place. And so many people that I know who've lived in Needham for a really long time don't know it exists or don't know where it is. So um, just to have more uh, fluidity with that and more of a, pre a presence in general for all of the art community. And so, okay, that's all. <laughs> okay. Well, we've been looking, um, trying to contact um, artists who have studios at Gorse Mills to try to get someone on board for a while. So it'd be great. We're just happy to have someone that works there uh, interested in joining us. So thanks for being here. Okay. And I know a lot. Of, uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I, will, I will mute. Our last share was really good at keeping our meetings running, and I cannot drop drop that amazing skill she had. 
Okay, so the first thing on the agenda is to just approve the past minutes. And um, Julia, we don't need to do a roll call. I think we someone should just make a motion to approve the minutes unless someone needs some discussion. Karen Breitbart, so moved. Seconded. Okay, all in favor of approving the motion, say the minutes say aye. If anyone's opposed, say nay. Aye. 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 Okay, so I heard everyone's voice. So that's approved unanimously. Unanimously, thank you. Um, and then we'll move on to the MCC grants. So I'm gonna give a little bit more background for you, Heather and Joni, but um, our uh, mission is um, the Massachusetts Cultural Council gives us funding to re-grant um, to artists uh, and organizations. And so we have um, that uh, timeline from them that we have to follow throughout the year. And so I'm gonna go over some of the things on it right now um, to keep us in check. The passwords were sent out finally. Um, I received them today. And so I will send the passwords to the MCC toolkit, which is a way for us all to log on, check out the guidelines that are the grant application guidelines for the year. Um, any other information will be posted there like the actual applications. Um, grant applications open October 1st, and they run through November 16th at this point. Uh, the budget still has not been decided, um, and there's no really further action on that. The state legislature has met um, and done a th short-term three-month budget, but it should be released another sort of short-term one in November. Um, so if something happens with that, um, then we'll find out our numbers right away. We're the only program with the Massachusetts Cultural Council. The local cultural councils are given minimum $1,000 so that the program will happen. It's just a matter of how much funding we get. Um, and then on October 1st, we need to set our council priorities, which are what we're looking for in terms of applicants. We did a big survey um, that is required yearly to understand what our community is looking for. And so I'm gonna do a little presentation with our survey results. We got 44 results, yay! Um, because Gail posted it on Facebook, which was really exciting. And when that happened, um, we got a lot more results uh, for the survey than we, than we had before that. Um, so we'll do a little presentation because we have to talk about what our council priorities are um, and uh, uh, to be posted on, our, on the Massachusetts Cultural Council site by October 1st. And so that the grants can then open, they run about six weeks. And then um, on October 31st, Gail and um, myself will have to fill out the annual report form section one and two. Um, and that's basically a, about how much money that we have from last year's grants um, that's left over. Um, so we'll have a meeting with Michelle, who's a town accountant, and she helps us with that. Um, and Gail is busy scheduling that. And Gail and I this week actually also redid our reimbursement form, which looked like it was a mimeograph from 1975. So we've re no, Charlie redid it completely. I had nothing to do with it. I you, just scanned it. Well, yeah, you did some scanning and editing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we're a team, Gail. Uh, we are. We are. We are, and we're going to get to the bottom of all our um, all of our grantees. It's actually a quite confusing. We had thirty applicants, and we granted eighteen last year. And so uh, as we're uncovering, I talked to a couple of them this week. Uh, I think two were postponed that did not receive funding. Two have been postponed that did receive funding and two were canceled, um, but did some work that they received um, their funding anyways, because that was the COVID measures that they count, the Mass Cultural Council allowed people to take their funds if they had done a little bit of work to their event, even if their event was canceled. Um, and so and I just wanted to mention a couple of them. The Parks and Rec Department for the town, they, we granted them uh, 
$750, which was our largest grant to do the summer concert series, which is a big event they do, they had to cancel it. So they had called to see, can we, um, should we send you back the check because it's been canceled. So we spoke to them and they submitted a letter. So they're gonna keep that funding for next year's um, concert series. Um, and so they'll have it already um, instead of refunding us. Unless anybody has any questions about that, it seems like the, it was something that we've funded for a while. Um, the other one of note was um, Dance Caliente, which is a group that um, did ballroom with the Senior Center, um, Center of the Heights, which gets a lot of different groups that um, we fund to do events there. They um, had been trying to work with the Center on the Heights. I don't know if anyone has connections there. Um, the person that works there is Aisha Kelly. Um, she's the programming manager. And when we have grants, she often um, will send a supporting letter in some of the applications. So I gave her a call this week and hadn't heard back because I thought we should just talk to her about what grants. Often we get applicants that we're not quite sure if the center of the Heights are supporting or not. Sometimes they have um, letters of support with them. Sometimes they don't. Um, and one of the grants, um, this Dance Caliente one, they um, turned their grant into a virtual performance, but then the Center of the Heights didn't want to fund it at the same level um, to match our $300. They, they, actually, they actually lost most of their budget, I believe, is so part of the problem. I, that was lost in translation. trying to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. So that, I think that part was lost in translation, but Dance Caliente reached out to, to us asking, hey, can you talk to Center of the Heights and let them know, like, even though it's a virtual performance, it should still get the funding you promised of a, um, but they, they didn't ultimately have the same amount of money to present it. Um, so they're not presenting at the Center of the Heights, even though it is a pre-recorded video. So I think, as Gail is saying, Center of the Heights lost their bud budget, and I, we seem to think that maybe they, a lot of the people got furloughed for now since they're closed. There's not a lot of stuff posted on their events calendar at the moment, so I'm not quite sure what's happening with them moving forward. If anybody happens to have any idea, Betsy, what do you think? I used to volunteer there, and I know Aisha Kelly. But I also know that um, she would be sponsoring it if she could. But I can reach out to her and ask if you'd like me to. Um, I left her a voicemail, and so I'm guessing she'll get back to me. Um, I can send her an email, or if you would like me to give you her email, I'm happy to. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, what, I'll reach out to her again via email if you think. Okay, that so I'll that send you her email. Okay. She's. Um, but by the way, they're supporting. Um, so many seniors. Seniors are getting lunches once a day, dropped off, and for a lot of seniors, that's the only food they get. Okay. So, you know, they are stretched really thin. Okay. Yeah, their newsletter came in my, our mail today. They're, they're, they have a lot of programs going on. They do. They're doing yeah. all that they can. I get daily emails, mm -hmm. but I'm happy to, I'll connect you with her. Great. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Um, and then, so I think the last thing for us to do is now look at the survey results in the, um, for this. And everybody say hi to Yael. Thank you for coming, Yael. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Or I'm just going to hang up with you. Okay. All right, let's see. Can you see this? I'm going to keep it small like that if that works. All right, so the survey results are in. So 44 Needham residents responded, 88% were women. Uh, they were aged 30 to 49. Uh, 
44% of them and mostly 30 and, and up. Uh, their favorite community events were performances and those genres that they loved were music and visual art were the two highest. Uh, the populations that they selected as most in need were low income, uh, communities of color, and teens. Uh, they heard about events through Facebook mostly, 79%. That could just be because that's where this was posted. Um, papers, they used 40, 16 to 40% based on Needham Times and the Hometown Weekly, uh, in email and signs, like yard signs. Uh, what I found was interesting, 62% um, of people said they'd use an arts calendar if it existed. And this is one of the marketing questions we put in there because we really want to put together an arts calendar, um, a place where people can find all the arts events that are happening in Needham. 23% uh, were unsure of whether they'd use or not. Uh, and then only 24% of these respondents said that they were aware that we had a grant program at all, which I thought was interesting. This is 76% of new people we probably hadn't even interacted with before. Um, and then the areas of focus that they want to see, uh, the top three respondents were celebrating local history and cultural diversity, events partnering with other local organizations, and public events and community projects. So basically what I got out of it, um, and then there was fill-in responses that was 68% of the people that filled in mentioned diversity, racial justice, and social justice. So I, I, uh, it may be a product of the time, um, but it's definitely on people's minds. And that um, is something that we don't address in our council priorities. So looking at all these numbers, um, there's a couple more slides, but we really wanna think about, this is what our cur current funding priority is. It's pretty bare bones. This is all we post on our site when people are going to apply for a grant. It just says that we welcome applicants from artists, musicians, teachers, performers, and other individuals who can enhance the cultural life of our community. And it says that priority is given to Needham-based individuals and cultural organizations. Um, but then there are some, I'll go into some fun stuff too, but that's, that's the main information. Uh, some of the programming suggestions that people were allowed to put, they, it was an open subject. So this is all write-ins basically drive-in movies, live music concerts, murals, art classes, film clubs, book events, environmental art, outdoor sculpture walks, outdoor music, and dance festivals. So runs the gamut of everything. Um, then there were some specific examples. I love this one, paint the Jersey barriers outside of uh, dining restaurants. There is one in front of Sweet Basil, if you guys have seen, there's some Jersey barriers there that are protecting the outdoor dining on uh, Great Plain Ave. So those would be a place that could be painted. Um, a town-wide lawn making, sign making campaign to support racial and social injustice. Um, painting classes by artists for students at Pollard and in the high school. Uh, a partnership suggestion of the NDI icon and Chinese friends of Needham for an outdoor festival with music and dance. I don't know what NDI and icon is, but um, does anybody else know what they are? I'm guessing they're cultural groups in the town. Um, programs for children with disabilities to participate with children without disabilities, um, more public art installations for local artists aimed at teen participation, the 1619 project, which is a project that brings light to um, slavery. Um, and this was my favorite. I didn't write this in, but I'd love to see the in-town artwork, including the electrical boxes using impressionistic style, more focused on the beauty of the art rather than something specific like a town landmark. I thought that was an interesting one. Um, so those were all the ideas that um, were suggested. And then there was just a bunch of, uh, one, a couple of the other questions were, what are the challenges you face? Um, these were pretty obvious fundraising and COVID pandemic related. Um, you can't gather in large groups, you know, lo loss of finances because of that. The Needham Community Theater just can't do shows. And um, then there's some more racial justice and equity issues. And then the notes was 
lots of thank yous to us for doing this for what we do. Um, and then this really well uh, eloquent one that I thought was is worth reading is the, I think part of your responsibility is reaching out to disenfranchised people among us. There's so many in need them and they're diminished and hidden. Let's tell their stories. I'd be more interested in hearing those and supporting the council with donations rather than the same old, same old club. Which I thought it was a useful survey. It came back with a lot of um, more information I think than we got last year. Um, so what we have to do moving forward is um, just look at the current funding priority. I've drafted a proposed funding priority, um, which um, if you've been on the council in years past, when we sit around and look at the grants, um, we, we choose grants based on um, some priorities, but they're kind of ingrained with the way that um, I think that when we sit down all together and, and decide who gets um, funding, we, we often, um, I think, make a tier of the amount of money. 200 has always kind of been the lowest, around 200 and 500 to 750 has been the highest. Um, some of the things that I know that we've talked about in the past, um, so the, this need and based individuals and cultural organizations, we prioritize that. Um, we prioritize um, groups that demonstrate a benefit to the local community as opposed to, um, we do grant, we have granted in the past groups that um, do shows that are like near us that uh, residents of Needham would go to see, but the show could be in Dedham. Um, projects that uh, have demonstrated community support either through partnerships or they've been, they've happened here many times. Um, and partnerships, I think, is also in there. Uh, new programs and projects are also encouraged and the council welcomes questions regarding potential projects prior to submission. We um, don't host anything that um, some, I think some councils host meetings so that they can help um, answer questions to potential applicants, whether they, um, if they're developing their application and want advice or don't know how to do it exactly, if that's a barrier to entry, um, having someone there to help um, answer the questions is possibly useful. Um, and then um, confirmed, I'm gonna skip that one, but confirmed event locations and dates strengthen an application. That's what I've noticed in years past. We, um, if there's the letters of support from the location and there's an actual date that strengthens it for our group. Um, and then, uh, so there's a lot of um, priorities that are being published through other councils right now. And the, the Mass Cultural Council, our contact there, Timothea has sent a few of them, Brockton and um, Worcester all have some really interesting ones. So um, this is, this is the, this line, projects that elevate the diverse voices and experiences of historically marginalized groups um, was the language that I pulled off of one of them without actually calling out um, the range of marginalized groups, because um, there's a large range. Uh, I don't know if there's any major things m missing here, if anybody can sort of volunteer what they see missing. Hi, Gail. Um, I think this people. is great. This is, I'm Gail Lustig. Um, it's a great summary, and it's nice to see it laid out like this. And I don't know if it needs to be captured or something. One of the things that I have found being the treasurer for three years now is that a lot of the people who ask for grants um, may promise an event and promise an amount of money. Um, I don't want to go back into the discussion about the senior center. We'll take that offline and see if we can figure it out. But basically some of the conversations are we know we're going to get X dollars from Needham Cultural Council. Can you give us Y dollars? And I think we need to tell our grantees that they shouldn't expect any dollars. Like if they get half of, a lot of times they come back and say, oh, well, we only get half of what we wanted, so we can't have the program. I don't know what to do. Can you help us fundraise? Um, 
and we do hear that a lot. So I think I would prefer where it, where it says confirmed event locations and date strengthen an application. Um, somehow, and I don't, you guys are really good with wordsmithing, but somehow phrase it that um, a dependent and not having a dependency on the council to fund the full amount of their application. Do you think it's helpful to put the amounts that we are normally? Yeah, I, I think so. But and and they're never guaranteed. Like, okay. like you know, we get these letters, and most of the people do it really well, and they say, you know, we're trying to get these grants. We hope to have it. Can you post us if we get this grant? And you know the the, the senior center specifically, and sometimes the schools say that, but sometimes they actually put an amount. They said, well, we're asking for 700 from the cultural council and can you give us another 200 or something like that? So they shouldn't reference the amount that they expect to get. Okay. But otherwise I think it's, I think it's really great criteria. I think it's very similar to what we've used um, in the past. Um, you know, Needham, Needham based is always number one, but we're not going to do like five, you know, acoustic guitar performances at the senior center. We're going to also do diverse grantees as well. So if they have something unique, then we're more likely to pick them than, you know, somebody who has the same thing that others do. Yeah, that makes sense. I, what I hadn't realized is there's a question on the application that says where you're going to get the rest of your funding from. Yep. Yeah, it's always there. Yeah. But then, you know, if they depend on our, like, say they ask for a thousand and they don't get it. Um, yeah, there, I always look at that one very carefully. And I know, um, I think Sharon brought it up a lot too when we were going over the applications. We said, well, this says we have no idea where we will get the extra money if you don't give us everything. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so they should carefully answer that question because it is asked. Elizabeth, do you have some thoughts? I'm just wondering, based on what Gail's saying, is it, if we shouldn't state that um, we're looking to expand the numbers of people we give to mm -hmm. and, and uh, having a grant in a previous year is no guarantee of this year, if that's what we're saying. Yeah, Elizabeth, that's, that's one point. I mean, we're not at the treasurer's report, but um, that's one thing we actually have to seriously consider because a lot, you know, most of our grantees, they did have expenses or they deferred till next year. If they deferred till next year, we're not going to give them more grant, more money. So in this, this year, we're in a very different position where, you know, if we gave you 250 last year, and you deferred your program, we're not going to give you more money because you have the money from last year. Well, if we follow up on the fact that only 24% of the people surveyed knew we give out grants, I think we should, with these ideas of expansion, say that we're up to uh, entertaining new proposals. I mean, there's a way to put that in kind of kind language that, um, our priorities are expanding to include uh, marginalized yep. communities or racial justice, but they put people on notice if you we are willing to do that, that just because you got $200 for the past four years doesn't mean you're gonna get it this year. Yeah, I agree. Well, it is an interesting year because even if you got any money last year, we might not have any money for you this year. Yeah, very clearly. But, but we'll get new applications, you know, at, at, yeah. at, who ends up getting the money is one thing, but, you know, expanding our base of interest, I think is uh, in, in a, a good direction. Mm -hmm. I had uh, one thing that I wanted to just talk through. So um, knowing that we're in COVID land and it doesn't seem like things are going to be changing anytime soon, should we add something in here that says 
something about like in-person events of a certain size or something like do we want to align um, at least for this next year this 2021 cycle um, some specifics around what we as a council are okay with funding like I imagine we don't want to fund an event that has 50 people there in person right yeah that's interesting I don't think the um, cultural council has given us any parameters around like how we would um, monitor groups in terms of the COVID crisis so your location may be yeah. the one do we want to do that ourselves I mean just a question I know that we're yes. like when we go through the question. process of reviewing um, we often in the digging that we do look up to see what type of event it is and where it's being held and all of that so it may just come up organically but I wasn't sure if we wanted to explicitly say it in our priorities so that we don't yeah. get applications from people that are doing these large events that we won't fund anyway. You could put that, you know, we will prioritize all something like prioritize events that fall within the current so guidelines. Problems. Yeah. Because you're right, like, I mean, for example, like Needham Community Theater did a, um, they did a Zoom play. They actually have done two so far. They're working on a third and they're amazing. Um, and they're just as good as being there. I actually think better because I'm like sitting at my desk instead of having to get out and go there. Um, so I think people who are being creative, not just, oh, we're going to do this thing and broadcast it, but really leveraging the technology and things like that. Um, those are the kind of things. And yeah, I got to remember to apply to a group for a grant when they come out. Um, but yeah, those are the kind of things we should prioritize, or at least we should be careful. Like, we don't know what, when we're making the grant decisions, we don't know when or if the guidelines will change. Mm. So there's um, an open house hours with our um, contact at the Mass Cultural Council on Thursday at two o'clock. And I'll, I'll ask this question. I think it's a useful one in terms of knowing, like, there's an amazing show, it's 400, people shoved into one small room. Do we want to <laughs> fund that just because of public health guidelines? Probably not. Yeah. Um, do you guys see anything glaring missing? Um, well, I, had a, I had a comment about when yeah. someone mentioned unique programming, mm -hmm. that if we did want to consider mentioning that, we could include that Needham-based individuals and cultural organizations, um, you know, with unique programs so that we're because like you said we don't want to have we're not going to fund you know five acoustic guitar programs um, do we want to bring that bullet from down below right underneath it because that expands on it a little bit mm -hmm. like the new programs and projects put that as a second bullet yeah i, I like bringing that up as well yeah okay. I wonder too about the public health guidelines. If it'll be interesting if the application has a question, how how will this program be conducted in the COVID environment, you know, or something to that effect? Um, if you know if you have to do this virtually, or you know, just something to that effect. Because yeah. we can't change the application, right? They're, no, they're, right, we wouldn't be able to. But, yeah. they, but MCC might be able to, I think that's there, great. It would help yeah. us to know how they're planning to address the issue if, if they are having to limit the audience or if they have to go you know, back to a virtual they'll already have had forward thinking about it. I have just a thought on that. Um, can you guys hear me? I unmuted. Yes. Hi, Heather. Yes. Okay. Hi, okay, sorry. Um, I think that the, I love that technology can bring people together. Um, I love that but I also think it's important to have art that is concrete um, that perhaps you see around town. And I know that you, 
people are going to come at it from different angles, but I think, and I don't know how you, if you can even word it for that, but a way that projects can be both concrete and include the community somehow, even within the COVID situation. I think it's possible. I just wonder if there's a way to word that so that it doesn't all end up being Zooming and brought to you on camera. I found it interesting that the, the survey was, people really liked performance over um, classes and gatherings. They, they really prefer that, which I hadn't assumed before. Yeah, I think, I think virtually it would only be if, if in the event, that they could not produce it if the public health crisis got uh, re phased back again, I think. Charlie? Also, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I don't think it's surprising that people chose performances. Um, I think it's something, it's like a thing for someone to do, an activity, yeah. rather than a enrichment into the arts type of thing. So that doesn't surprise me. Charlie, I think the thing about funding should not cover 100% of the event budget. I think it should say Needham Cultural Council funding should not cover because they will be getting funding from other venues. Yeah. And I'll go over this and have my amazing editor, Julia Gould, look it over before we post it. But I, I just thought uh, having it a little, um, more robust than we had in the past would be useful. And a lot of other cultural councils are very specific about what they'll fund and what they won't. It's, it's a, uh, very complicated and I'm not sure, quite sure we're quite there yet, but I think a little bit more would, would help to clarify. I was but gonna ask, um, for other councils, they have a list this long. Is it, are they long? My thought is that th these are a lot of priorities. Yeah. And do we want to prioritize this list so that it's not so overwhelming? Um, but I also don't know what other councils do and this may be normal. Um, there is, it's a, there's a, it runs the gamut. Okay. Yeah. Um, some of them just prioritize location and diversity, really. It had a little bullets about that. And some, you know, were specific. We don't fund field trips. We don't fund operational support. We won't do this. Um, but there's a lot of guidelines within the MCC application itself that we have to adhere to anyways, and they have to read through that first. And so this is really um, like demonstrating a benefit to the local community. We could probably even take that out because um, there is like a bullet in the MCC that I just found. And actually I, I was going to bring it up later, but there's, uh, it says, it has to um, have public benefit to uh, and open to the public, the general population. It can be a specific um, subset, like a small group of teens, but um, it seemed like they really discouraged like uh, something that the general public can't go to, like an event at a school is what um, I kind of got from that. But when we um, look at our applications, I think we can look at that more. Closely. So I have a quick, a quick comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you finished, Joni, or you want to go ahead? Uh, well, one, one other thing. Just um, for for 30 years, I taught writing at Wentworth Institute of Technology, and I'm also a food writer, so I pick up on things. And if you don't want me to be picky, I won't. But your the thing says priority will be given to application to applications that are, and these bullet points don't follow that format. So you might want to just change oh, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. Priority will be given to applications according to the following criteria. You know, something like that. Yeah. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. We'll rework so our magic on it. If our um, survey mentioned, results from the survey mentioned the diverse voices and yeah. marginalized groups, I mean, I realize that those bullet points under priorities aren't necessarily in, you know, one isn't any more important than the other, but should we have that one a little higher on the list? Just so. Yes, and is everybody comfortable with putting that as a prior, 
like a priority? <clears throat> Anybody yes. else comment about yes. that? Okay. Under new programs or above? Here. Above. Hey. Up below, it's fine. Yeah, I think there yeah, is fine. Yeah, I think there so is fine. I think there is fine. Okay. Um, is that enough group editing for now? Does anybody else uh, have any other comments they want to make? Um, I'll make Julia, our marketing guru, wordsmith it for us later, make sure it, it looks good. Any other priorities anyone wants to raise their hands and mention? Okay. Um, I think you can um, combine the uh, grants historically range in amount with the NCC funding should not cover 100%. That's that good. could be one thing together. Okay. Yeah, that's probably a good one less bullet. Yeah. All right, sounds good. We'll do that. So then we'll, we'll get that posted before October 1st. Um, we'll try to keep it as exciting. Uh, I think maybe making sure the language sounds exciting so people want to apply to us, but general, uh, still general, um, but being clear on what our priorities are as a group, because it's kind of like our mission. And so um, then that means we can roll into our next subject, which is our marketing um, and branding, which we, we still need a lot of work on. Um, and this is sort of about our identity, partially. Um, but we have the town website. I had it updated. Um, we updated. Rose. Yeah, I can ask if she in with anyone else. Um, yeah, so it took, it took them a month to actually update it. So I think it makes an amazing case for us to have. Um, By the way, Charlie, we missed like a few minutes of that. You yeah, did you? I just saw that it was a little frozen. Um, the, I'm sorry, I'll. Oh, no. Darn. She said that you she can see it's eight o'clock, so we must be out of time. <laughs> yeah. She said she was in her uh, husband's office in the basement, so it could just be an internet thing. Does anybody else from the marketing committee want to give an update? Yeah, I'm I can, not. I've been I, doing fundraising. I, can, uh, do, I don't know exactly what where she was going with that but uh, I know what for the website um, she was saying that she updated the town's website but had sent um, a handful of things to the town to post um, and it wasn't done in a timely manner um, so that gives us kind of fuel to um, have that conversation again about us getting our own website um, that we can use to promote our uh, work and programs and grantees and all of that but I don't know where she was going with that or if she was able to speak to the IT person. I was going to say, I need publicity so we can keep doing more art boxes. I thought the last one was amazing. Um, I went by Kendrick Street today and it was just fabulous. And I think I would, what I really loved is not just the response from us, but like the, when I posted on Facebook and Betsy, thank you for reminding me to put the sponsor in, um, to put John Judge in. And then he, somebody said he's not on Facebook, but I let him know. We got such great feedback from so many in the town. So much congratulations to John as a local artist. Like it was just a really, such an amazing feel good thing. And I mean, it looks amazing compared to the boring gray. And it does, doesn't it uh, underscore the racial equity? Um, yeah. Oh, it does. It speaks to so much. And I would, while I was watching um, Charlie and everyone put it up, I thought I'm connected to this. This is amazing. Yeah, I know. Whoa. And Betsy, your fundraising 
rock. Well, please, uh, uh, please just, you know, give me another project. I can't yeah. wait. Well, we could use a couple more dollars for that one. Thanks yeah. for moving on without me, guys. I'm so proud of you. you kept <laughs> that rolling. I don't know why I crashed. But um, did you see it was posted on the town's Facebook website today, too? We're doing a little press for it. Oh, That's no. Great. I never go to that website. I don't even think I follow it. <laughs> well, we, we did a press release, and so we're nice. getting it slowly and surely. Um, we need to get it in the papers next, and I think it's going to be in the Chambers newsletter and on their Facebook site. Oh, the town of Needham posted it to their Facebook page today, yeah. I saw. Yeah. So. The PIO said now that um, she's working with us, she'll be posting, posting, uh, posting stuff for Fantastic. us. Fantastic. But um, I also got a letter. Um, I'm getting a letter in support of our Facebook slash um, website campaign from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. They're actually writing a letter in support of us getting, we don't have um, a Facebook page for background for everybody. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to make a really good case when we end up meeting um, with the town to see if we can get a little bit more robust. And that will speak a lot, I think, to getting um, more applicants for our grants if we can publicize in that way. It's very frustrating not being able to have our own accounts that we can post to right away when we're so excited when we have something like that. Yeah. Although I will tell you that our posts will never be deleted from the Needham Mass Facebook page. Thank you for that, Gail. <laughs> if they do, it. I just undo it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, all arts, if you've noticed, like you can post once a week for all artists and all organizations. In fact, that's something, um, for you, Heather, to know that um, a lot of people for a while, people were not allowed to post, like artists can post like once a week or once every other week about what they're doing on the Needham site, which reaches like 17,000 people in town. They are allowed, like generally selling isn't, but artists are. So like we should promote events. Like one of the things I thought of is, you know, if one of our grantees has an event coming up, we should be promoting it like hey we gave a grant to them come see their thing but it's it's allowed and it won't be taken down and and the town will be able to see what's going on great um so the other thing with the our third box we should move on to talk about it because julia yael and i met, met about it came up with a million different ideas we sort of settled on one idea which was um basically to hire an artist who can run a community event for us. Um, I came up with this little flyer. Hopefully this won't crash me again, but um, it's uh, the new location is on Great Plain. Uh, I see this box picture. It's on Great Plain and Central Ave. And so the idea is to do basically a call to um, the community for works that are inspired by our beautiful eagles of Needham that came to visit. Mm. So this was one idea. So the, the, there was two eagles that everybody went cuckoo crazy for that kept visiting the town. They had their own Facebook page. We were looking for a call that could be um, basically a symbol of hope and life um, and something that was um, very easy for everyone in town all ages to connect with. So the idea would be to hire the artist and sort of really work with this artist to create a, this community project. I think we would want to get the person first and then have the, um, uh, and then have them sort of help us develop the call to see if they could either take photos that are submitted, digital images, and um, create one overall picture for them or select a few and create it, um, we're not quite sure. So that's kind of the overall idea. Um, uh, but there's lots of other ideas. Um, Elizabeth Cook, we'd love your reaction. Oh, I think it's great. And it was one of the priorities mentioned in the survey that we um, focus on nature and the environment. I want to know how Betsy feels about it, given that she's the one that goes out and tries to raise the money. Oh, I'm all, I'm, I'm on board with it. And I'm, 
Do you guys know Eileen Hoffman? Yeah, she actually applied, um, she submitted some pictures to the first RFP call. Yeah, that's okay. who came to mind. Yeah. Just because She's, her pictures are phenomenal. They are. What Would you like me to reach out to her and see if she'd be interested or I don't I'll let quite, you guys control that. Yeah, I don't think quite yet. Um, I think, I think um, we need to discuss it a little bit more in our group. Um, we, I think we really need to find a dynamic artist designer who can create, help us create this community project. I've been doing a lot of research and talking to um, artists so far and one of the ideas was to sort of get lots of these little photos and create a photo mosaic, which is an entire picture. Um, but I don't know if that will work on a, an electrical box. Um, if you're, you know, you, it, it may, might not read properly. So I think we need to find the right artist to be able to do that. Um, and we don't only just want photographs. Um, I think that's one thing. Um, Any of the USBs. Oh. But um, I wasn't quite sure about it, but I, I think the way to go about it is to find the right artist who can help us build the project. But I'm glad you guys are jazzed by the bird idea. Put a bird on it was my working title. <laughs> I like, I love the bird idea. Um, and people in the town are nuts about birds and the otter. Um, <laughs> but I also think, I don't know how big that box is, but you got to think about the visual impact. Most people that are going to go by that box are probably on that intersection. If I, is it at the intersection? It's at the intersection. And actually I was there today. This picture doesn't really do it justice, but as I was there for two minutes, 10 people walked by it. Cause in my head, it's uh -huh. just a driving intersection. So I had yeah. thought when I first talked to an artist, I thought, Oh, a photo mosaic won't work because people will want to go up to it and see their own picture that they submitted and see where that is in it at kind of like a tile project. But you can actually, that's the sidewalk side shown. You can actually see it from there. Um, the end, but the other side is definitely traffic. It's a very big like intersection for driving. Um, so yeah. we had originally, as a, as a working group, had thought it needed to be something more simple this time visually because we thought it was more hidden, but it's a lot more out in, in your view than I had anticipated. And there's a stoplight there, so yeah, it's get big, to stop. Yeah, it's a big traffic intersection. Um, does anybody have ideas of artists um, I'm, that are designer, community-based artists? Uh, that are good at running community projects. If you do email me, um, there were a couple of people that submitted on the RFP that are really good designers, because I think we need somebody who can um, design something that can, that's got many pieces into one um, with a background as a digital designer. Um, that was our thoughts on that. I can, I'll think about it for sure. I can't think off the top of my head, but something will come to me. It has to be Needham based, right? Um, e preferably. preferably some kind of connection to Needham. Doesn't, right. uh, we've never actually said that they have to be, the first RFP was a connection to Needham in some way. So whether work, you worked here in the past or, I don't. I know some artists, but I know artists, but I'm not sure they're digital. Um, I think this person has to have experience in running community art projects and in designing, yeah, digital design because it is mm -hmm. going to be a vinyl wrap. So it has to be a, someone yeah. who can graphically design many pieces and put them into can, one and still have can, a visual impact. I can talk to one of the people I know, but she may be able she may be more the right one than the other one i was thinking of because i know she does digital stuff a lot of digital stuff and i think our working group is going to go back i th i think there were a few people who submitted to the original rfp who had some really good design backgrounds that might be a place to pull someone from and i know eileen hoffman did too so um if that came time to talking to her too because she seems to be the nature photographer around these parts Charlie, uh, does the artist have to be able to gather community? It seems to me that's a separate function. 
Um, they need to be able to, I think that we can do all of the press around um, having the images submitted, but I think they have to have experience in figuring out how to combine many images into one and tell that story, not no. just the design background, but the, but the able to craft it thoughtfully. No. Yeah, but so these not, not necessarily have to deal with all the personalities. Uh, right, right, right. So the assumption yeah. is if people submit something to this, that they are giving us the right to use their photo for a piece of art? Yes, and I think that's the catch, though, because I think if, if we open this up to the community and we say it in that way, people are going to expect to see their image on that box and um, mm -hmm. would be disappointed if they didn't. So I think we need to figure out how to make that happen. And I think that's the part that the artist, I think, has to, we need to talk to them about. We can so word yes. that in a way, uh, excuse me, um, but I think we can word that in a way where we're not saying your picture is going to be the full art box, but will be used in a collage of. Yeah, I think image. that's, I think we just say, you know, by submitting it, you're, you're giving us permission to use yeah. it. Yeah, and this is that was just like a little draft call. That's not yeah, yeah, yeah. an actual call. So I just want to be sure that I understood. No, I got that. I just want to be sure that. Yeah, I and that's what I'm torn about because if we're going to make it a broad community project, everybody submit your image, get excited. Then if we don't use their image, that's kind of like, meh, meh. and so, but I, 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 I haven't found a successful photo mosaic piece that um, I've seen an artist do that would work in the public realm. And um, I'm, I'm, so I'm not totally convinced that it, this idea would even work. Gail, what do you think? Yeah, I, I guess, and I'm just listening and you guys do such a fabulous job. I usually kind of leave this all to um, <laughs> wiser minds than I. I'm just thinking, um, you know, we've been talking for a while about trying to involve the students and I know they tried and stuff like that. And I know, um, like, I don't know the, a the AP art teacher at um, Needham High, but I just wonder if, like, I do think we, if we make a general call to the community, it's going to be hard. I just wonder that if maybe working with, you know, the artists at the high school, like the AP artists, mainly because you know, there's a lot of things they do. Like I would imagine, I haven't seen it, but I would imagine Art and Bloom is not happening. Um, so those seniors this year who normally like shine at Art and Bloom and get to showcase their art in such a wonderful way, maybe we could make this an opportunity to take the AP art students and work with them because I think their art teacher might be able to help them, you know, craft the assignment in a way and work with, like you said, a mature artist who knows how to do it, knows how to work with digital. But um, I just think, I mean, if you guys have never been to Art and Bloom, it's amazing. No, it's it's just stunning. And I think as seniors, the two things that you do, you do Art and Bloom and chalk it up. And they did chalk it up in their driveway last year. And they had a drone go to every driveway, which was amazing but they won't be able to do art and bloom so i wonder if if we can somehow leverage these ap students um and target um, them it's as, funny you mentioned group. him because he was actually on our first rfp call too as one of the artists who submitted work yeah um, so teens was an area that people had pointed out um yeah but we had we had really wanted to lean towards a call to the whole community to get everybody involved because it seems like people have a lot of time on their hands. Um, but if well, I have a comment, um, yeah. Charlie, that when you were saying about the idea of so many, uh, whether it be a tile idea of all the photographs coming together that on an art box, it's a great idea, but. I'm just wondering if maybe we could think about that for the mural. Yeah. And to think of something else for the art box and use the students for this art box. Students. Is that, um, so that, I mean, that we're going to come board the with the idea of the teen, the high school is a good. I, I third that motion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. high school. Yeah. Yeah. 
anybody else have any other partners they were thinking of? Well, I mean, it, it brings in, you know, certainly working with teens, working, it's a community effort. It's, and, you know, it's, it would be something we haven't done before. Um, we've talked about doing it. Okay. All right. Well, and we'll especially since they're be... probably going to be short on projects. We'll have the working group meet again and, and mm -hmm. tap into some partners and artists. I think it needs a little bit more discussion mm -hmm. um, around it. Uh, I was very excited about put the bird on it box, but then when I'm looking for ideas of how the artist might pull us off, I haven't actually found anything. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so- Charlie, yeah. how, many, how many electrical boxes are there in town? Um, there is a whole lot of them, but we, um, we picked out three for ourselves that are traffic signal boxes. There's others okay. that are like Eversource that we can't touch. Um, okay. but these were the three that we um, really focused on. And thank you, Joni, for the segue into our next agenda item, <laughs> which is other public art projects, which may be a better fit for um, a community art project like this. Um, we have a couple on the agenda. Hey, Kathy, do you want to tell anybody? people about that Walgreens space, what your update was on yeah. that one. That was I, I just, I'm with Joni, my, Joni, I don't want to pick your brain, but were you thinking if we have a lot of art boxes, we could have birds on a lot of different boxes? Was that uh, where you might have been going? I, I was, yeah, I mean, I was kind of thinking <laughs> that, and I was thinking a box has four sides and we could start, you know, one side, the bird could be on a tree, the other one, a, the wings could be going, and by the fourth one, it's taking off. My brain has been, has been working on them. But it's also been working on what groups do we want to engage in this? And if we're talking about the kids at the high school, um, it would be so wonderful if we could provide a project for them so that they feel that they have something to show mm -hmm. for all the things that they're missing out on this year as seniors and all the, the seniors who missed out last year. And I mean, I, I, my kids didn't go to Needham Public Schools. They went to Gann Academy and Solomon Schechter, but my neighbor who babysat for us always did and we went to so many art shows at Needham High School for her and when she won the Boston Globe Art Award we went to that and and it's so important and these kids must be feeling just you know what's the use what is there well in this the survey definitely pointed out teens as a as a um, area of need to focus on so I think that would align pretty yeah. well okay yeah Okay. All right. Um, thank you. So do you want to talk about the mural project? Do you yeah. want to do a little segue uh, sure. yeah, we have, about your conversation? We, ha we have a couple mural projects that we were, um, we we've talked about. Um, one is um, there's a Walgreens area that um, wall that um, Paul Good has, is the chair of the revitalization um, trust fund. And he was giving us an update on a bunch of walls that he's working on. Um, one of them he's putting up, uh, he has a proposal for a Ridge Hill Reservation um, wall graphic. And we found out, I think it's the same building that we had been talking about, the Walgreens space. Um, the building across. The building, from yeah, the building across from Walgreens. Um, it's owned by Boylston Properties, and it's um, uh, basically where that Wellesley Newton ponchos slash Treat. It's where the G, where a treat is. Where a treat is. So they, they have a proposal already for that one. Mm -hmm. um, so that one might be off of our table. Um, we, uh, I, the Cultural Council was reached out to last week for um, the 100 Days, which is the new marketing campaign of the Newton Needham Chamber of Commerce. It's 100 Days to support local business um, and get people shopping, but not get them shopping too much because they don't want to have anything in the stores to draw too many people at once because they need to follow their COVID rules. So there's um, a committee that um, myself and Kristen are going to be on to discuss a potential mural with them. Um, I will just put the caveat that I think when they say the word mural, they might just mean a banner in town with some infographics. Um, 
but when I go to the meeting, um, they've only sort of done an introduction. I, I was thinking of introducing them to the concept of rainworks and, and little sidewalk um, rainworks, which we've talked about in the past, um, un, like scavenger hunt kind of finding um, things in, on the sidewalk. Um, mm -hmm. I remember we talked about Rainworks before. Mm -hmm. um, for the new people, Joni and Heather, who are potential new board members, it's a product that I'm now obsessing about, which is, um, it's like a temporary spray paint that you spray the asphalt and it only appears when it rains out. Um, so we've talked in the past about doing like a water-based project um, about water scarcity. Um, my new tagline is weather the weather. Um, but it, that's all in progress. So I'll give you an update about what happens to that. Um, and then the third one is Light Up Needham, which um, is the former Needham Lights is now going to be Light Up Needham, which um, is the title. And it's about um, putting up Christmas lights, not Christmas lights, I'm sorry, holiday, non-denominational holiday lights or decorating your front yard. It's going to be paired with the neat old um, house tours, which was the, um, women's club. the women's club house tours, which will now be the women's club drive-by front door decoration tours. <laughs> and they're working on a title for that. Um, so it's just a grouping of events non-events, a grouping of cheer, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and so I suggested to them a sort of like a, some sort of art, little scavengery hunt art thing that um, people could do to go, or when they're going, driving around the towns, they have to find like a little character or something um, that connects them because they have no, no connection and they're not allowed to do, any, the town's not allowed to do any events even like a hot chocolate, someone had suggested a hot chocolate food truck and they don't wanna do anything that is um, going to create a gathering. Yeah. Um, but the other mural ideas. Um, well, I don't think we should, oh, I don't know if you all got the impression that maybe the treat building is off our table. I did, I just wanted to bring you up to date that um, the proposal that Paul Good has hasn't necessarily hasn't really been presented. He did send the rendering to their office. Uh, has not been discussed with them yet. Um, I followed up with their office with an email and um, spoke and mentioned to them and sent them the last two art boxes that we did so that they get a sense for the kinds of things that we've done. And also uh, mentioned that when my husband spoke to the owner originally, reminded him that he had said he wanted something fun. Now, obviously what we've done is more fun than Ridge Hill. Um, not to say what Paul had put together isn't nice looking, it's just not fun. Um, I wouldn't think so, at least in, when I think of that phrase. So um, I just said if they wanted to um, consider working with us, if they could perhaps elaborate on their idea, um, then we could, you know, talk some more. Here's some photos of what we've done recently. And um, also told them that part of our process was to talk to other organizations in the community. And by doing so, we had found out about Paul's plans, that that was how we sort of stumbled on this, uh, this whole thing. So, so anyway. That is a very equitable way to put it. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. we'll see. But, um, but anyway, I mean, there, there are a lot of walls in town. I'm sure that there's something that we could we could find. That's true. It's just a very predominant wall in town, very close to the town center. <laughs> town center. And um, the Revitalization Trust Fund does art, but they mostly do um, revitalizing urban spaces with mm -hmm. beautification. And we're public art that follows mm -hmm. um, 
you know, public art standards right. with artists. Right. Um, so it's kind of two different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I haven't heard back from from them yet. I just sent it late Friday, so so we'll see. But um, I that's that's where we are in those two those those three areas. Um, I don't know if there's any other locations people were thinking about. Um, I think it'd be good to get a proposal together for Betsy to start fundraising. Um, but uh, as we ask our applicants, we want location and date usually, but um, location at least. Um, the, the middle school- We'll also think criteria. Criteria. I mean, we wouldn't really have a criteria for that. Yeah. Um, I started putting together a collection of projects, public art projects around um, the country that are just amazing and that we would love to see. Well, I, this is the point where I mentioned asphalt art projects for the ground, because um, those are something that I want to get done in the next three years. Um, so I think we should keep our, everybody should keep their ears and eyes open for opportunities and spaces for locations. Um, and partnerships, um, we'll continue on that one. And then uh, so we can move on to the discussion of member recruitment. Sorry, this meeting is running a little long. Let's move it along. Um, Heather and Joni, thank you for being here. Heather, I wanted to ask you specifically because I know, I think you actually used the town form to um, apply. Um, and have you heard anything back from them? Because part of the process of recruiting is filling it in. Did you fill that form in and see if anybody replied? Yeah. And no one's replied. <laughs> it usually takes them like when they're prepping for the next selectman meeting, they usually yeah. will call you then because you come up for a vote at the selectman. Okay. And you, did you do that like two weeks ago on the I, committee form? Yeah. I, okay. Oh, I can we look can, We can mention it to, mention it to Sandy. Does, doesn't she I have that? mentioned it to her and um, uh, they just seem to be running very behind there with obvious reasons, but I I'm can, curious. I can hang John Boolean and tell him to make sure it gets on the agenda. <laughs> Get it on there. Is Where's there an interview? The, um, where can, is the form, Charlie? I will send it to you on our okay. Neven okay. Council, Council site. Um, it basically is a committee form and then you, the process is you go through the town um, uh, and they give you an interview, then you do have to, if you're breathing, you pass. I'm kidding. But, but basically, you, they just say yes. Like if you don't show up and you're not drunk. Or, yeah. <laughs> Even if you are drunk, who knows? If you walked, it's okay. Wait, they was there a Google Google interview? <laughs> Oh my God, question. I don't even remember. It was like a And then there was a physical interview. component. And, <laughs> yes. okay. yeah. Oh yeah, don't forget the CrossFit. Yeah, Funny push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just meet with a couple of select board members. They're very nice. They ask you questions. And then um, if, if you're approved, then you get sworn in, which is very exciting at town hall. And um, you have to uh, complete a conflict of interest policy. Your term is three years and you have to take the, then, then you can do another three years because I just found out, I just signed up for another three years. Um, and then, um, then you have to sit off the board if you want to come back after those six years. But you're obviously going to fall in love with us for six years that you're never going to want to leave the Needham Cultural Council. Sounds six. like fun so far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yay. So the, uh, I wrote to one other person who was interested in joining the board through the survey. They just said, hey, I'm interested. So I wrote to them. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other suggestions for people, but I would be so excited if Heather and Joni joined, because then we'd be up to, is that 12, Julia? I think 12 or, yeah, with Kristen, maybe 13. So that's consider pretty good. Me, consider me joined as long as they find that I'm breathing. So. <laughs> okay. If I'm not breathing, I'm going to be very concerned. <laughs> Charlie, should we be thinking about people of color or difference? I know, and I never thought I'd say this before, but uh, we might have to start thinking about having some men join us as well, um, because we definitely need to broaden. But isn't that interesting? 88% of the people of the survey were women that uh, that, yeah. that filled it out. It's Well, that's because they're the ones that hang out on Facebook. No offense, but 
like, maybe, but I have noticed a lot of cultural councils are mostly women, yeah. mostly white looking and mostly older than 50. Well, it doesn't need them have or they will have a census and don't we have a lot of indian um born um or indian second generation families uh i know that's come up with a couple of grants so, yeah I, yeah I, mean, I, will, I will reach out to the indian community a little bit more i have been asking around to a couple people my my last name is punjabi my husband's indian um okay. so i i will try to reach out more but i think it's definitely something that we need to focus on is a little diversity um amongst ourselves so if we have two openings or something i think we ought to reserve them and and um definitely look at the indian community that does more to them okay. sounds like a plan to me okay and then uh next um uh, the next discussion we need to have is, oh, Julia, will you, is that your microphone? Will you um, my, mute for a second? Um, the advocacy discussion. We are looking for someone to um, listen in on the mass creative updates. The next one's October 2nd. I've been listening to them. They kind of give us a, like a picture of what's going on in the legislature. I thought we needed somebody on the committee who would be a great, uh, that could just be our point person for giving us an update on what's going on. Uh, politically in terms of um, uh, uh, the legislature and anything else. If someone's interested in that position, um, please let me know. Um, and the piece that goes with that, um, Gail sent the article and we talked about it for a second, but the select board is having a conversation about, I can't use the verb chalking, my husband gets very upset. So uh, writing with chalk on the ground of the town square is a, was a, a discussion that came up in one of the select board meetings. Um, I wrote a personal letter regarding it. I have not sent it, um, but I was wondering if as a cultural council, you all thought that we needed to write um, something in support of free expression or against free expression and, and writing with chalk, or if this is something that we don't handle as a council together and people just write their own personal letters. Does anybody have thoughts on that? Did they say there was going to be a, a, a hearing or? Yeah, they're so bringing it, it up on the, yeah. at the, and there was a lot of discussion online and I know you guys probably spend less time online, um, but I actually had to moderate the discussion because it was getting out of hand. Um, there is going to be a discussion at the select board meeting because they feel they need to make some type of rule about um, public spaces. Because again, like our public art, I'm sure they wouldn't have any problem. But the problem is one person's offensive speech is another person's freedom of speech and how do you moderate and you can't spend the day scrubbing down chalk and they think it's going to lead to an all or nothing kind of thing. Um, I mean, it's different than what we do. Like I was, when I was reading the discussion, I was thinking about like the rain paint that I was like so excited about when you guys first told me about it. Um, I have a feeling that they're going to try, to, they're going to end up saying on public land, which would be like town center um, and maybe some other places that you can't, randomly um, use chalk to write messages um, because then you would, somebody would have to judge if it's okay. Um, you know, somebody posts a, a portrait of themselves and they're Caucasian and someone said, well, that's not inclusive. We need people of color. And then someone posts, you know, it, it just, it's a slippery slope that they just don't have time to manage. So my guess is they're probably just going to disallow it. Um, but it, it definitely, it worries me from a public art standpoint as, you know, we get great kudos for like our electrical box. We got so many likes and so many comments, but, you know, I think they're going to have to make it broader than just using chalk. I think 
maybe not at this meeting, but I think they might end up having to make rules around public art. Like, sadly, would it mean the select board needs to approve anything permanent? Mm -hmm. um, which I don't think there would be a problem with what we do, but you know, it's another thing in the process and you know, we would have to go before them and have that, like, I don't know where they'll end up, but my guess is they'll just take the easy route and say, um, no random use of chalk or removable paints or whatever on town common. <laughs> well, that's, so they'll go to Needham Heights. I mean, it, well, that part, that's public uh, space no, too. So no, like, I, well, I know, but everywhere, space, is, yeah. but everywhere is town space. I mean, I know. sidewalk is everywhere. So, so is your berm, you know, you're not supposed yeah, to sign exactly. on your berm, even though people think it's theirs, it's not really. I mean, it's a tubby, touchy subject. They're using ordinances that other towns have. They're not starting from scratch. Right. Um, Although I know that- Sued not long ago and lost a lawsuit. Yeah, I know. And and Mo Handel, who never, never is on social media, he's the one that posted, you know, here's my feelings and here's why. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him post. Um, and I thought it was very thoughtful and, you know, trying not to be provocative, but I, I don't know. I think they're in a really bad situation. Like, nobody's, uh, nobody's going to be happy no matter what they decide. So it doesn't answer Charlie's question on do we, as a council, yeah. make a statement or submit something to the newspaper of, or do we, I mean, I mean, we are a town. <laughs> so, so how are we, we allowed to? Yeah, I don't are think we, we are. To? I don't think I we are either. I don't think we are. Think I think that's con that was that uh, I just had to do that training. Well, two and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we probably can't. I don't think we can submit something to the select board. How? Because I think yeah. we're we fall under the town. I don't think we can give an we independent. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I don't think we can take a position. Okay. And so probably probably if you personally want to submit something, then. But but can we individually, as a member of the council, even? Mm. I don't think you can do it as representing the council. Yeah. I think you can do it as a citizen of Needham. As a citizen of Needham, yeah. but, but not, I don't think you can yeah. make a position or even. But if someone knows you're a member of the council, does that? Well, then they know. I mean, it's, it's a matter of public record, but I don't think you can sign it. Oh, right. You know, right Sharon right, Breitbart, right. member of Needham right, Cultural right. Council. Of course. But you're still a citizen. You can, you can take whatever mm -hmm. position you want. You just can't take it as as a member of the cultural council. Right. If the select board hasn't decided what they're, where they've landed on this, could we present it as an, an option to consider as they're making their final decisions? Like, do we want to talk about how this could work if we feel strongly as a group that, you know, this is something that the residents of Needham should be allowed to do? Should we recommend a way that they can do it where you know, maybe it appeases both sides. Well, that's an interesting approach. Since they haven't made a decision, we could. Yeah, it's not like we're going against opinion. anything yet. We're just right. trying to get in on the conversation. Mm -hmm. Coming yeah. from the art side. It seems to me that our acceptable level of art would be much broader than any parameters they're going to set based on their, their ideas of what would be acceptable. I'm not sure it would be a productive kind of thing. I mean, it's sad, but we're living in very divided and, and, and tense um, times. And I'm not sure that they're gonna say yes to anything at this point. I think they're, they're gonna just come out and say, no public lands can be used for chalk art or any other kind of um, personal expressions of whatever. They better come to my front yard then and see that what my six-year-old has been drawing in the street. Yeah. 
but that's yeah, I mean, private. There's, there's such a range. I mean, it's I one thing to have, you know, words written, but it's another thing to have, you know, a beautiful, you know, piece of like a sidewalk sand. I agree. I mean, right. why don't we say, you know, we what we could make it as a, 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 a an art project. Every every class or every grade could get, you know, one month. This is your time to make that space beautiful with some chalk. I, you know, I mean, we could. Well, we did give out chalk last year, so I hope we don't. Yeah, we were promoting. <laughs> <laughs> we could be creative and and let the kids take it over and see what they come up with. My guess is it would probably be a lot more political than things that they're already afraid of. In um, you know, with the older kids, but. I don't actually hear us coming to a con consensus over something that we would want to say. I, I mean, I can ask Sandy and see um, what she's thinking that we, I just don't, I, I, I would feel remiss if as a cultural council, we didn't put our voice um, yeah. towards the Slack board and support of art and culture. But, um, I don't know how vague we what can what, what if we asked Sandy if we could submit something to them before their discussion? Okay, is there anybody that's against submitting something? Well, that's something support? that says what? I mean, something that says we support art and that's inclusive and open to all people and we don't think we should shut it down. I mean, it depends on this. I, I, I mean, I'm in support Obviously. of it if we're allowed. Yeah. 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 But that yeah. follows our principles that we laid out, I think. Yeah. And I think it's how it's framed and making sure that if we're worried about ruffling feathers, which I don't think we would, but um, that it's, it's like we're, we're offering a solution if they decide as our select board to go down one route or the other. Oh, and is our solution an actual project that we can help um, or <laughs> an actual? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't would know. Someone maybe someone would want to touch a public art project like that with a 10 foot pole. I mean, yeah, do um, we want this as a project? I mean, we already, they already have like own your peace day where people say stuff. I mean, there's a lot of things like the students at the high school did the thing on the, that they hung on the walls of the cafeteria was it like May or June this past year? So there have been things done. I think it was more, generally those are not political. Although that one was, that was the like- Chalk art from the high school events have been, a, seem to be a little bit political. I mean- Not that I remember, but to... I might be wrong. But yeah, I mean, I'm not against it being political. I just think that um you know we're not a homogeneous town as much as we pretend to be oh, so i support art 100 percent. i support everybody's right to give art and i think we should ask sandy if we're allowed to make a statement do you if know we're what allowed, they're afraid then we can, of like craft it and agree on it via email or something do you know what they're afraid of it's not afraid it's being conscious of the fact that there are contrary opinions. It all started because somebody wrote Black Lives Matter, which I shouldn't know. be controversial, but it is for some people. Uh, don't roll your eyes, people. Just remember, you like, know, you're it, right, I, you're right. I don't, I don't like, think it was that. I think it was more than that. I think there was an acronym that was um, yeah. offensive in another way. Wasn't but there were, other, there were other things, and I, I think that okay. The argument is, okay, if you can write that, then I can write Trump for president, which is your opinion. So I, I don't think they're afraid of anything. I think okay. they need to make a policy. That policy could be, it's chalk, it goes away. Feel free to write, write what you want. You can't use anything that you can't say on television. You know, going back to our friend George Collin when we were growing up. Um, so I think, you know, they could end up just making really loose guidelines. I don't know how they're going to end up. That's why they're having a public hearing on it. 
I, I think, think it's just important just to, to make a cleaning policy of once a week and that well yeah I mean or it's gonna or, rain. or I they mean, could say it's gonna be cleaned uh, 24 hours after it's put down I mean they clean the they clean those sidewalks anyway because that's they right. need to keep them clear that's the center of town mm -hmm. I just think they they feel like they need to weigh in and make a statement because there is no statement mm -hmm. and you can't violate something that doesn't exist right so they want to I don't think they're against public art. I think they're just feel like it's a gap in our regulations. Right. When we took our daughter to college. I, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, in the in the 90s, so 99, she, uh, I'm sorry, she graduated in 99. Um, in 97, when we took her to Wesleyan and it was during Gay Pride Week and the entire campus with the main drag leading into the city of Middletown, Connecticut, and every sidewalk on the city of Middletown was chalked with gay pride messages and pictures. It was, we walked around the little town for the entire afternoon that day, and it was unbelievable that this town had allowed things that were a little offensive and in language and other kinds of things, but they did it. And so I guess that was my first um, exposure to chalk art that wasn't what my children drew on the driveway. So I guess I, I just didn't see the big deal about it, but looking at it from their point of view, there's something to be said, I guess. I mean, or somebody- not. If somebody wants to put a great big Trump for president sign on public land on Monday and the following Monday, there's another one for Biden and the third Monday, there's something for someone else. It's, it's the way it is. They're going to vote that way. People live that way. And if we respect it a little bit more, you know, without criticizing that, maybe it's a beautiful piece of art. I, but I don't think that I don't think the town can risk doing that. Mm -hmm. And what's more, that doesn't build community, and that's one of our huge intentions to build community. Yeah, I I would just like to point out that seven minutes of nine, and I really need to go. Yeah, we're all done here. I think so. I I can check in with Sandy on this topic and see if there was something. Um, and that will be it by that. But that's everything we have on our agenda tonight. Besides, um, our next meeting is uh, October 26th, and we'll be um, at that meeting, hopefully closer to knowing what our budget is. Um, we also have a meeting December 28th, which might move depending on whether or not um, we vote for um, the grants, because it's a strangely timed one, so we might end up moving that one. Um, but then that was all we needed to discuss. Thank you guys. Sorry, we ran so long. Sorry, closed out on there. Move, we adjourn. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We go adjourn at 8.52. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thanks, Clay.